Hi, my name is Bridget Olenek, and I'm a band director for the Fostoria City Schools, and also a percussionist with the 122nd Army Band based out of here in Ohio. We're all trying to get used to this new level of normal, and I thought I would share uh, a little information with you about four mallet marimba and how to do the technique and also how to work on that technique. And some of you might not have ever learned how to play with four mallets before, so this video is supposed to kind of help introduce the technique to you and show you how to get started. So there are three pretty popular grips or techniques when it comes to four mallet playing, and for this video I'm just going to focus on one of them, and that is known as the independent grip or also known as the Stevens grip. So all three grips are completely fine and totally up to you on personal preference, but just for the purpose of time, we're going to just focus on the one. So this is what the technique looks like when you've got all four mallets in your hand. And so in order to construct our technique, we are going to start one mallet at a time. It's also important to note that in order to keep track of our mallets, since there's four now instead of two, uh, we number them starting from the left or the lowest mallet, that's mallet number one with the yellow tape, and then the one in the other side of your left hand is mallet two, three, and then four is going to be your rightmost mallet. All right, I'm gonna start by setting them all down and just go one mallet at a time. I'm gonna start with my outer right hand mallet, also known as mallet number four. This mallet is going to go in between your middle finger and your ring finger, just like this, and you're gonna wrap your ring finger and your pinky finger around the bottom of that mallet so there's not a whole lot sticking out at the end here, just a little bit. And so you're going to be able to hold on to that mallet with these two fingers. From there, we're going to take mallet number three and we're going to first center it in the center of our palm like this. We're going to wrap the middle finger around the bottom of that mallet. So I have these two fingers completely free. Meanwhile, this one is barely holding on to this mallet here. From there, you're going to put the top knuckle of your pointer finger underneath the stick of your mallet 3 and rest your thumb over the top of that. This is going to be your fulcrum. It forms a bit of a T, kind of like we do with two mallet playing. In order to make these even, you want to try and get the mallet heads to be parallel to your playing surface. So that means you're going to have to raise up your outer mallet a little bit and lower your inner mallet just a little bit so that they become even. This is done by rotating from the wrist. So now we're going to try and do the same thing in our left hand. So starting with your outer mallet, that's going to go in between your middle finger and your ring finger, and you're going to wrap those two outer fingers around, and I'm only leaving that little bit of tape there, that's there on purpose by the way. Uh, that's how much should be sticking out of your outer mallet. From there, you're going to put your inner mallet centered on your palm, wrap your pointer finger around it, and then put that top knuckle under the stick and rest your thumb naturally on top, just like that. Same thing to get it level. I have these two. You notice, naturally, this one's going to be higher. And so your outer mallet, you want to twist that up a little bit, rotating from the wrist, and then lower that inner mallet so that they're level. So once you've got the mallets in your hands on the left side, then you just got to get used to picking them up and putting them down just like you did the first time until you get comfortable going one-handed at a time. And then obviously you're going to have your hands busy and you have to be able to pick them up one-handed. And so honestly the best way to practice that is just practice dropping your mallets on the floor or on the instrument and picking them up one by one. So you can set them on the, on the instrument and then slowly you can start one mallet at a time, pick them up like this, and then eventually it becomes a fluid motion and you don't even have to think about it. So to just keep things simple and short, we're going to just focus on the two main types of, of strokes when you're playing with four mallets. You're either using both mallets at the same time, and that's our double vertical stroke, or you're going to be using one mallet at a time, and those are either single independent or single alternating strokes. We're going to start with a double vertical. You want to make sure that both mallets are going up and down at the same time, so you don't create a flam effect like you would with snare drumming. And you want to make sure that the motion is instigated from the wrist. So I have my mallets over the notes C and F, which is a perfect fourth. That's a really natural, good distance to start with. From there, just practice doing individual strokes, starting up with a nice fluid motion, 
and using gravity to help kind of drive that stroke without causing a lot of tension, like this. Notice that my knuckles aren't turning white or purple or anything unnatural uh, because I'm barely holding onto the sticks, just enough so that I don't drop them. I'm not squeezing or using any kind of force. I'm letting gravity do a lot of the work. After getting that initial motion underway, you want to try and match your left to your right hand. It's important to keep your hands and your fingers in the same spot that they were when you set them. Uh, there's a natural tendency for these fingers, especially in your fulcrum, to scoot and move around. Sometimes the fingers go out like this, or they go all the way in like that, or your thumb starts to squeeze. Try and keep them in that same neutral position. If you get bored with C and F, you can start moving up the keyboard or moving around the keyboard, trying different chord combinations. Uh, I'll show you an example of just moving every four notes from my perfect fourth C and F and moving up the instrument. For independent strokes, I like to go back to my major scales if I'm on a keyboard. So for example, playing a C major scale, but using just a two of my mallets. Most common combination of mallets that we use for two mallet and in independent strokes are two and three. So this is an example of playing a C major scale with just my inner mallets. And what I'm trying to do with this technique is the mallet that's in motion is rotating off of the unused mallet. And so it's kind of a rotating motion like this. And you can kind of see this mallet, it moves around a little bit, but for the most part it's staying in the same zone, and you can kind of see the threads of the yarn rotating. It's also important to keep this mallet on a vertical path, so you're the most efficient. The same works for your outer mallets, or any other mallet that you're working on trying to rotate around the unused mallet, but also maintaining a vertical path. So for a lot of percussionists, having a keyboard readily available, especially right now, is not possible. We can transfer a lot of our technique work to playing on the floor. So everything we talked about just a second ago on the mallet instrument can be transferred over to just literally playing on the floor. So here's that double vertical exercise. On this one you'll notice I'm trying to get all of them to strike the floor at the same time and with a floor surface it's easy to tell if you're not. With the independent stroke exercise same thing you can just work on two mallet combinations at a time. One of the fun things that I like to do is I like to turn on some of my favorite music that's super groovy to play along and just kind of do this technique building, building strength while listening to some of your favorite jams. This is something that you can do while you're at home, not leaving the house, uh, away from your normal source of musical instruments. I know it's kind of an overplayed quote, but one of my favorites is when words fail, music speaks. And for me that rings true especially now when there aren't really a whole lot of words for what's going on. So hopefully my video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment on the video or reach out, uh, look on the Vader website. I have Vader mallets in my hands and you can check out the website to see all they have to offer, but I'll just mention the ones that I have here in this video. I have on my bass voice the CEM31M for medium, and then I've got the CEM40MH, the medium hards, and my inner two mallets, and then my outer mallet is the CEM50H, the hard. Hopefully this was at least a little bit helpful to you. Stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and thanks for watching.